The music of Tame Impala is really something special. I just love how playful, energetic and creative his style is. That's why today in the song analysis series called What I Learned From we'll be diving into one of his more stranger hit songs called The Less I Know The Better. And for the people who don't know this song yet, I can already tell you this is really a gem. So let's get creative. To me, the music of Tame Impala characterizes itself with pumping and strong rhythms, lush and full synth textures, vintage guitars and dreamy vocals. It's like a mix of different genres that create a surprising electronic vintage cocktail. I've been a fan ever since I've heard his debut album Inner Speaker, which was quite a long time ago already. Apart from this extremely tasty bass riff, which was actually played on guitar, and the very stable pumping drum pattern which is sometimes interrupted by multiple snare hits and kicks, which is mostly done to pull you towards a new section of a song. So apart from this I cannot dive into the music production of this song because simply the video would be too long. There's just too much to mention. Today I want to focus on highlighting some songwriting techniques that we can learn from and also use in our own music. So first up, the melody. The song The Less I Know The Better takes repetition to a whole nother level. The verse's main melodies are almost literally repeated. And to increase the flow this repetition is strengthened by constant perfect rhyme at the end of each line. Just listen to these words for example. Together, get her, Trevor, ever, better. The verse melody is very catchy and singable. And when we look at one phrase we can see that it consists of two smaller phrases or melodies. And both of them start on an upbeat which already propels the energy forward. The relatively easy rhythm and lyrics make it extra catchy and memorable. And when we take a look at the melodic contour we see that the first phrase has a nice arch shape while the second short phrase starts up and makes its way all the way straight down. So they have variation in which direction they go but both of them stay more or less in the same range. So what makes this song such a strange hit song? Before we get to that let's take a look at some interesting things that are going on in the chord progressions. Let's dive in to the harmony. When you strip down the verse and the B part, which we should actually call chorus but that does not make any sense which you will see later on. If we strip them to their most essential chords, you are only left with two chords each. Just listen to the verse and it still sounds good with the other two chords left out. With artists and producers like Tame Impala you see this more often. They trade harmonic complexity in favor of a rich production. If I look at the harmonic complexity of let's say Gotje, you often see that he switches between only two chords. And do these two chords ring any bells? So what's the function then of the G sharp minor and the B major in the verse? Well they create more variety in color and they also create a pull towards the chord that comes after them. The B is a fifth apart from E, so that creates a dominant relationship. And the G sharp minor is also a fifth away from C sharp minor, so this creates a minor dominant relationship. The key of the song is E major or C sharp minor, and this depends on where you look and who you ask. So how does a D major 7 chord, which is not part of the key, end up in the B part? This chord is borrowed from the parallel Dorian mode. Because the chord on the minor 7th scale degree in the Dorian mode is a major 7 chord. In our case in E major we have a D sharp half diminished chord. And the only thing that we have to do is lower the D sharp with half a step to D and then voila we have our D major 7 chord. So we only change one note with half a step. So now let's get to the exceptional part. The structure or as we can call it the form. While listening casually to Tame Impala's song The Less I Know The Better, I actually never noticed how interesting the song's form actually is. First of all, when we look at the lyrics we see that there's some interesting dialogue going on between the A section and the B section. The song starts with an intro and two verses, which is quite standard. 
but it's only after the second verse that we hear the lyric that carries the song title in it. And after that, the title is nowhere to be seen or heard again in the song. Then, if we continue, you would expect a chorus, of course. The only thing is that in the B section, we don't really have lyrics that are super memorable, which you would expect from a chorus, and there's no real repetition of any important lyric in it. So, can we then call this a chorus? I don't think so. After this, we have another verse and a B part, but they are twice as short, just to keep the pace going. This is also quite standard. This happens in a lot of songs. But we are not finished yet. After this is a very long outro, or what I prefer to call the C part, because I find that the identity and size of this part is just too long and too strong to be a mere outro. Especially when you look at the fact that this song has no real chorus, and it ends with a large part that did not really have anything to do with the previous sections, then you ask yourself the question, how could this have become a hit? What is its secret power? Personally, I think it's because of the great bass riff that you hear throughout the song, catchy and repetitive verse melodies, and the lush and beautiful production. This is all accompanied by a very strong and stable drum beat that keeps you locked in till the end. And of course, these are just my words. But what do you think? Do you agree? Or is there something else that really attracts you to this song? Let me know in the comment section below. And as always, a cheat sheet of this episode will be available via the link below. And if you enjoyed this song just as much as I did, then don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. And for now, see you next time.